Hi everyone, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life and our end of month completed pages video. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, I just want to premise this video by saying that everything I'm going to show you today is up on the channel as a colour along. I will put a few links up as I go, but um, YouTube limits me to I think about five different links. So um, if you pop over to my playlists and search for the artist or you could just go to my channel you will find everything there now i'm feeling very accomplished this month although i only have nine completed pages to show you all i did manage to complete everything i wanted to this month so let's get started so first up we have uh spirit animals by hannah carlson and i've done two pages um this month from this book now the first one I want to show you here is this unicorn double page and let me just move all this out of the way. So um, I absolutely adore how this page came out. I think it's one of my favourites so far. Um, I ended up using more of a minimal colour palette than what I originally intended to use when I first started colouring the page. My original idea um, was to include pinks as well through the unicorn mane um, and to bring that through as well in the person's hair, maybe colour their hair pink with just these little braids um, with the purple or the blue through it. And I also intended to use a lot more green than what I did. So I ended up using sort of a muted green on um, the unicorn horn and some accent pieces on the jewelry as well. But um, originally I was thinking of coloring the actual unicorn in a green instead. Um, I am glad that I didn't end up doing any of those things and I did stick to the minimal palette. Um, sometimes I get these ideas in my head and... They just don't come to fruition because as I start to colour the page, something else pops into my head and I tend to go with a different direction. Um, so when people ask me, do I plan out my pages? Yes and no. Sometimes um, what I envision before I start is what I truly want to come to life. And sometimes what I'm thinking of, um, I change my mind halfway through and other times I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> It just go with the flow. Um, so what did I use on this double page? So this was coloured with um, Holbein pencils. So all the pencil work is Holbein's. We've got a Jelly Roll Metallic. So the border is actually um, a purple Jelly Roll Metallic. And then we have some gold metallic on the jewellery. And just on sort of the edges around the headpiece and the horn. Um, we have some stickles which I used on her face. In the photo on Instagram, you can't really see it. Um, I don't even know if you can see it now. I'm trying to shine it. Um, so it looks like I haven't coloured the stars, but what I did, I did leave them blank and just put some stickles on there instead. Um, I was going to wipe them out, but I thought they were cute to leave. And we've got just a tiny bit of white Signo used on the unicorn's eye. Um, and the best part, in my opinion, is the Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray, this gold colour that I used in the background. Um, if I can just hold this up, let me see if I... Oh, excuse my squeaky chair. If I stand up, I might actually be able to catch the light on it because it just looks so pretty um i did put a reel up on instagram which shows you the light capturing the gold shimmer it just turned out so pretty i think that's showing it for you um and of course the background i used neo color twos um, just some different shades of purple and a little bit of blue just bringing through um, the colours that were used in the picture into the background as well. Um, and then I try not to add too much extra colour in. Um, the rainbow, I didn't want to do just a purple and blue toned rainbow. So we do have the purple and blue tones that were used throughout the page as well as the green that was used on the jewellery. And then I just added a few other colours here. Um, that just kept in tone with this little muted pink that I've used here 
and it sort of also matches her skin so um, that way I wasn't bringing in too many new tones okay so just pop this back in here the other page I colored in this book was this ladybug page here so um, some of you may have seen this page before because the right hand side was completed as a colour along um, a year, a year ago, a year or two ago. Um, now I haven't filmed the left hand side but I did use the same colours and techniques from the first video when I completed this side. Um, in fact I actually had to go back and watch my colour along myself to figure out how I'd coloured some of the elements because it was so long ago, my colouring style has changed and developed, we're always evolving. Um, so the way I'd colour the flowers today is different to the way I originally coloured them. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the original, it's just my style has evolved um, from a year or two ago. Um, so it did take me a minute and it did take me quite a while to colour the page because I had to keep remembering and looking back and thinking, how did I do that? Where did I put my shading? Um, and all that sort of thing. So what did I use? I use castle art pencils for all the pencil work and I love the bright colours. Um, I have inadvertently used the um, analogous method with choosing my colour palette. So we've got the reds, the pinks, the orange um, and the yellow which are all adjacent to each other on the colour wheel. That was an accident but it did work out really well. Um, the background we have uh, Distress Ink. Uh, with my cloud stencil and again even with my method for applying my distress ink this is one of the very first um, or one of the earlier pages I did using distress ink so I have sort of mastered that a little bit more um, since then and I do have a video on how I do my cloud backgrounds now um, up on the channel but I had to try and try and do it similar <laughs> to see if I could get the pages to match um my ink was drying out a bit i need to get a refill so it is a little bit lighter than the other side um we've got csy paint so i needed a bit of sparkle it had no sparkle on this side of the page so for the ladybugs or ladybird however you want to say it for their wings i added in that csy paint hopefully it is shining because i cannot see my camera um, and I used some jelly roll glaze on the ladybug's eyes. Um, and I also went through and added it onto this page as well. So it isn't there on the original video, but I have added it in. Um, and we have some jelly roll stardust and metallic as well, just on her crown down the bottom here. I think that's it. And... The Signo in white, of course, just um, on the little dots that were on the flowers and also just a little bit on the eyes of the of the ladybugs as well. So like I said, this is this half is up as a colour along and I coloured this based off that. Um, the only addition is the blue. So the pink I used on the hat is the same as the pink flowers. And it's just her hair, her skin, and the little blue outfit, which I'm matched with this little crystal. Um, everything else is exactly the same. So that is Hannah Carlson's Spirit Animals. One of my favourite Hannah Carlson books, actually. Okay, and next is um, Enchanted Earth by Mel Pimini, Chatsa Panagotu. Um, now, this page, I think, is one of my favourite pages that I've coloured so far this year, or maybe even ever. Um, this is the candle page here. I love how it turned out. Um, and I didn't intentionally make it monochromatic. The original picture in my head had more vibrant tones of red. Um, the leaves were going to be green, the totals were going to be either bright purple or bright vibrant red. Um, but I'm glad I changed my mind and went with these autumnal colours and kept it with a similar palette throughout. Um, now I did get a little bit stumped when I got to the bugs and the snake on what colour to choose. I scribbled down so many different ideas from pink to purple to red. I think I've got some of those papers scribbling down different <laughs> different combos what I could use um, 
but I didn't want them to become a focal point on the page. So I decided to go with a bit of a more toned down red so it would blend in more with the rich ochre tones that were used on the rest of the page. Um, it took me a while to figure them out. That was the hardest part, but um, I really love the end result. And for this one, I used Polychromos pencils. Um, and we got Neo Color 2s for the background, Polychromos for all the pencil work. Um, CSY paint was used on the bugs and it was sort of like um, this greeny gold but it has a sort of reddish reflection. Let me stand up again and see if you can... Hmm. It's not really showing... Is it showing that red colour? Not really. Um, what else? Oh, I used the Kaisercraft Shimmer Spray in gold again. So while I'm standing... See, oh, there you go. You can see it on the toadstools really well. I love the effect that's added to the background. I think it looks really pretty. Um, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, and I also used white Signo as well. So just on the all these little dots around the outside and on the little um, bumps on top of the mushrooms as well. And I think that was it. Yeah. Um, so that is Enchanted Earth by Mel Pemini, Chet Spanagotu. Okay, next we have Wildflower Folk by Christine Caron. Now this page was so much fun to colour. Uh, it's nice to colour something pretty and delicate for a change instead of my usual... Uh, mythical creatures and monsters <laughs> and this is the first time I've actually colored anything by Christine Caron so it's our first page in this book um, and this book was actually gifted to me by the lovely Monica as well so um, there will be more color alongs in it because it has so many beautiful images and it was hard to choose which one to color first um, but this one was really drawing my eye um, now I am really hopeless with flower identification if you've been here for a while you've probably heard me say that over a million times by now um, but I had pictured the flowers pink from the moment I set my eyes on this page um, and the page is called Spring Awakening so I just wanted to use a colour palette that would reflect that theme as well um, and keep it light and fun so um, try to bring these sort of orangey tones through to the butterflies um, the green from the stalks through to her eyes uh, her hair I didn't want it to be too dark I wanted it to be a nice light um, pretty colour as well. So I used Prismacolor pencils for this entire page. Um, the background is a soft pink pastel. Um, it's quite delicate so I'm not quite sure if it's showing up on the page. It is very soft. Um, we've got some white Signo which I used inside the flowers and on her eye here as well and some stickles on the butterfly um, which they don't show when you're looking straight at the page but if I tip it to the side or angle it you might be able to see those stickles showing up um yeah so that is our first page our first color along from Wildflower Folk by Christine Caron so there should be more of them to come um hopefully in the next few months okay Next, we've got Rita Berman's Mine Rice Dish Asian. Now, it's been a while since I picked up this beautiful book. And this page, I'll put a poll up actually in the Facebook group. It was between this page and this one, which is the dragon, I think. Yeah. Um, this page won out. And can I zoom you in a bit closer? There we go. Um... I knew that I wanted the ducks to be yellow and the water was going to be blue, the grass was going to be green, obviously. Um, and because I made the water and the ducks so vibrant, I didn't want to introduce any more colours into the picture. Otherwise, I would lose the focal point, which I wanted to be the ducks mostly. So we didn't introduce that many colours into it. Um, it did make colour choices a little bit hard. But I do love the end result. It's very um, bright, very vibrant with all those primary colours um, on the page. Now, there was <laughs> down here. So, um, what did I colour this with? Did I? 
I didn't write this down, did I? Um, I used Prismacolor pencils. Um, we've got White Signo. We've got Jelly Roll Glaze. And I think this is Jelly Roll Metallic, the silver. Now, with the Jelly Roll Metallic, you can see here um, you've got the frame around the, the doorway and what looked to me like a handle to hold on to when you're sitting on the seat. So I thought we had the same on this side as well, a door frame and a handle. Um, but then when I went to colour in the cat, I've realised that I'm pretty sure that's not a door handle, it's the cat's tail. <laughs> so the cat's got a very shiny tail, but I'm going with door handle. The tail is hidden, it's its door handle. Um, yep, so this one is from Rita Berman's Mine Rice Dash Asian. I need to pick up this book more often and Europa as well. It's really fun to colour and because the images are a little bit smaller, I find them nice and quick to colour as well. So, oh, actually, we've got some stardust as well. I just spotted that then. Oh, in here too. Inside the little cushiony back of the seat. Some Jelly Roll Stardust. Okay, so next we have Rooms of Wonder by Joanna Basford. Let me just zoom you back out. Okay, so I manage one page in this book, which is our full book colour along for anyone that doesn't know, or one of our full book colour alongs. So every page in this book will be done as a colour along um and it was this page that we did this month i feel like i did this page ages ago must have been closer to the beginning of the month because it feels like a long time ago <laughs> when i colored this um so now when i look at this page i picture an indoor bedroom and the trees are part of like a novelty bed um you know if you've seen those ones you can get for kids that are like racing cars and stuff like that that's what I was picturing it's like a treehouse um novelty bed inside of a room so we've got the window we've got the door um, and I pictured these little vines as part of the wallpaper background um so I did them sort of a neutral color so they wouldn't stand out so much um and the color scheme I went for was actually to match the opposing page so for example the green from the tree leaves actually comes from the green of these leaves down here. Um, I've brought the pink through and the orange and the yellow and the blue from the parrot and the other elements into here. The blue for this blanket comes from the background um, and I didn't add any more tones in. I just kept those. Um, oh, actually, I did. I added the purple, but it was the purple, the pink, the blue, the orange and the yellow. Um, with green as most of the colour um, and uh, and the, the roof here for the houses I brought through from this leaf as well so um, try to bring through and match the colour you know what I've just realised as I'm talking to you I didn't colour the border how did I miss that how did I miss the border I've only just realised now that I didn't colour the border the border is supposed to be gold like this border I'm going to have to go back in and um, do that because now it's not finished, is it? Yeah. I'll have to go back in after I finish filming and colour that border. I don't know how I managed to miss that. Um, now, although I used the same colour combos for some of the elements, I still think it looks quite different while still being cohesive. So to achieve that, I did try a softer approach to get a more gentler finish to the page. Um, I've used a lot less pressure than normal, which is very, very difficult for me. Um, I am a huge fan of smooshing that colour on as hard and as fast as I can. So it did take me longer than usual because I had to constantly think about keeping my pressure soft. Um, and if anyone wants to know how I do that, if you're heavy handed like me, um, let me grab a pencil. I've got one of my brute finners out here. Um, normally, if you see me colouring, I hold my pencil quite um low to the end and i press down quite firmly so if you're trying to go for a softer look and you find it hard like me put your hand further back on the pencil and color on an angle like that so instead of down like this for hard pressure 
like that to get a soft pressure instead. Um, so it took a lot of thinking <laughs> to keep my mind on trying for a softer look. And if you do look closely, you can still see some tooth in the page as well. I haven't fully burnished it like I would normally do. Um, now you could. You could do this with your lightest pencil, uh, a white pencil or even a blender. But I find that any of those will change the effect slightly. So that's why I left it with a bit of tooth showing, which is very different to my usual style and very difficult for me to do. Um, I have done it in the past, so if... Give me one second. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This one here is one of my earlier pages. It's from uh, Enchanted Forest. And I was going for a light look as well. This one was uh, polychromos with a Prismacolor background. Um, it is one of my earlier work, but um, as you can see, when you get close up, it's not fully burnished. So that's what gave me the lighter effect rather than that uh, deep, vibrant colours that I normally uh, tend to, to go for. So that's all we did in Joanna Basford's Rooms of Wonder this month. Hopefully we get a little bit more done um, in this book next month. And last but not least is Mythic World of Kevy Roseanne's, another full book colour along we're doing on the channel. So every page in here is up as a colour along. Um, before I show you this, and I did complete three pages from this book this month, so I'm pretty impressed with myself. Um, but first I just want to say that the Kirby Community Collab is completed and the full Alien Worlds completed book um, is up on the channel. There's a video that went up, um, what day is it? I think it went up on Monday, maybe? Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember now, but um, it is up there and a big thank you to everyone that participated. The end result looks amazing. Um, I love watching the book come alive with all those different colours. It's very um, inspirational to see how each and every um, artist, every colourist has, they've just done it so differently and it just works so beautifully together. It looks wonderful. Um, and just seeing everyone's different imagination and creativity come together as one, it was just wonderful. Um, and what a beautiful team effort. And thank you to everybody who got involved. Um, and hopefully Kirby will love it. So, where are we? Okay, now, this is the first page I coloured here, this grumpy little monkey. Um, and like with the Joanna Bassford page, I felt like matching this page with the one opposite. I don't do that all the time. It just was, you know, what I was in the mood for this month. Um, so, the water down the bottom um, and this little purple outfit matches with the leaves as well. Um, with the castle, I wasn't sure on a colour palette at first. Um, I was originally thinking of reds or greens. That was before I decided to match them. Um, I did look up a picture on Pinterest and realistically the castle doesn't have any of those colours I was thinking of. Um, so if I do remember, actually, I'll pop up a picture here of what the castle looks like in real life. Um, and even with the cuffs and... The vest on the monkey, I didn't want to add in any more colours, so I decided to keep them blue to match the castle as well to get this nice cohesive look. Um, so I used Prismacolor pencils and we've only got a few different accented um, things on here, which is Jelly Roll Glaze and Stardust. Where do I, okay, so the black is the Jelly Roll Glaze on the black edging on the cuffs and the vest and then the silver is the jelly roll starter so we've got that um on the vest details the cuffs also on the the castle and the little warriors swords as well um and of course white signo um around the clouds and is that all i've used it on yeah yeah, so that is our first page completed from Mythic World. And we've completed so much at the front of this book. Um, where is... Aha, uh -huh, okay. So this one is another one of my favourites this month. Again, very monochromatic. So I seem to have been in a mood this month. Um, I had absolutely no idea how I was going to colour this page when I started. 
but I am pretty ecstatic with how it turned out. Now, the hardest part for me was um, deciding on the colours for the fish and the birds. I was originally considering contrasting them with reds or oranges um, or even yellows and my daughter was on board with that one too because I was sitting here arming and ahhing all night I've got no colouring done trying to pick um, what colours I should use and in the end I decided we were both wrong and I was just going to try and keep it monochromatic and I'm so glad I did um, I really love how it turned out in the end so I'm glad I changed my mind now what did I use I used uh, Neo Colour 2 for the background and Prismacolor pencils for everything else and then there's just a little bit of white Signo which is on the waves um, and on the eyes of our fish and our whales and just a little bit on the edges of our skeleton as well. So no sparkles on this page. I did think about it. I considered it Sometimes you just got to know when to stop. Sometimes sometimes I don't know when to stop. Sometimes you just need to put your pens down and say, that's it, it looks good how it is. Because I was going to add in, like the gold shimmer spray that I've shown you earlier, I have it in a few other colours as well. And I've got a black one and a blue one. And I'll show you. These ones are actually called iridescent sprays, not shimmer sprays. Sorry, I've got to move my lights out of the way to get in my drawers. the light back okay so I've got um the black iridescent spray and I've also got this blue but it's a turquoise so it's a different shade of blue than what I've used so it wouldn't really match um I did think about using the black one and making this really dark originally um but it just didn't fit in with my plan so I think it turned out really good the way it is and I'm glad I didn't add anything extra because I really love it. It's one of my favourites. Um, it does feel a bit weird seeing something without any sparkle at all on it, but I think it looks really good how it is. Um, now, there is another one. And I can't see my bookmark. Um, which one was it? Oh. I'll find it. I thought there was a bookmark in it, but maybe back here somewhere ah there we go found it so this one was the last page I colored this month I actually don't even know if this is up as a color along yet I'm not sure where I'm at with my videos so if it's not up yet it should be up very shortly hopefully the next day or two um so this guy here I had a few scenarios running through my head with this one so the very first idea had a fiery sunset background with the wheat stalks um a green tone um another idea had a blue background and then the creature himself would have like a burnt red and orange tone to him um and then lastly obviously the version that I created um so I was still tossing up until the end. I wasn't quite sure, but I actually like the colours that I that I ended up using for him as well. Um, so I used I used um, did I not write this one down? This one was polychromos. No, I haven't written it down. So this was all polychromos pencils. Um, I've got white signo on the wheat stalks. There is a little bit of um, Jelly Roll Stardust, Jelly Roll Stardust Silver. You can see a little bit that's just threaded through his fur a little bit there. Hopefully that's showing up. Um, and the background was a black Posca. Now, normally when I do a Posca background, I do a layer of pencil first so I can get a nice smooth finish. Um, because it was just little little bits and pieces and wasn't a big background, I decided against doing the pencil. Um, in hindsight, I'd probably do the pencil first because I always get a really beautiful, smooth finish. Um, this one, it's not so bad, but I can see in some places um, the lines if I look really closely. Um, so I am a bit of a perfectionist, so it does bug me a little bit. Um, and next time I will use a pencil, but um, yeah pretty happy with it turned out and I'll just show you that the Posca has not come through onto the page behind as well um, in case anyone was wondering 
and I think that's it yeah that was it so that's my third page in mythic world completed this month so um not that many it was nine pages completed but I, I feel like I've accomplished everything I set out to do this month which is a good feeling because the month before was a little bit of a disaster um not sure how June's gonna go I'm gonna have a look through my books now and um pick out some pages so I might do a video with the color and plans for June June is a big month for me um it well my puppy has its first birthday on Sunday um so we're all prepared I've got a cake ready to go um for him we'll make that with my kids on the weekend uh Monday is my mum's birthday uh Thursday is my birthday I'm turning 44 so I'm starting to feel old I I do still feel like I'm 21 but um until I look in the mirror <laughs> And then I can see the difference. Um, and my son's is the day after mine on Friday. And then I've got my father-in-law's the week after that. So it's going to be a busy month of celebrations. Um, so we'll see what I can get done. I will try not to have too many high hopes. Um, on that note, um, that's it. That's everything I managed to colour for the month of May. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what your favourite page this month was. I'm not sure. For me, it was either the, the whale from Mythic World or the candles from uh, Enchanted Earth. I don't know. One of those two would be my favourites for this month or maybe both of them. Um, so I hope you all have an amazing day and I will speak to you all next time. Bye for now.